Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel Picty Stitch Life is So Creative. This is a podcast about crafts okay so anything I make that involves stitches or fibre. So today I'm going to show you what I've been up to. I've got some finished makes to show you, some works in progress and some plans to share with you uh, what I've been up to in the last seven days. So today is Sunday the 18th of July 2021 and it's really hot. Hence that's why I look like one melty mess. It must be 30 degrees today. Um, I'm coming to you from the northwest of England and boy is it a scorcher. I mean I'm just oof, melting. It's a good job we've got an air conditioning unit and that's on full pelt in my other bedroom because we live in a dormer bungalow so um, you've only got to put your hand on the ceilings here and it you can feel the heat it is so hot so goodness knows how people went on years ago before we had aircon so yeah <laughs> got a fan in there plus the aircon it is that hot because I only feel comfortable with temperatures that range around 20 two to 26 something like that and that's just about all i can manage really um <laughs> it's terrible <laughs> um, i used to love going out in the sun and i used to actually sunbathe years ago um obviously in the 80s everyone wanted to have these golden tans but now i just find it so hot um that is quite unbearable for me actually so <laughs> and to 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 video in my craft room that was just no go because the sun is at the moment around that side of the house so it's really coming uh, into the room and really um it's hotter than 30 in that room so i've had to come in the spare room anyhow enough about that let's get on with what i've been making so if you remember um last uh, it was two podcasts ago i talked to you about the plans i had for the four by four capsule wardrobe um a template i had obtained from a website called the vivienne files and i'll pop a link in down below um to that actual template and it's a four by four and i've chosen colors that match that um, silk scarf um, I had um, for my Christmas present, my Christmas box a couple of years ago. Um, it was from Aspinall's of London. Uh, quite an expensive silk scarf really. Well, expensive for me. Um, and I just hadn't been able to wear it because I've got nothing that matches the colors in the scarf. So hence, why I wanted to make this capsule wardrobe. So I'd already got this Clara blouse, um, which I'd made from some satin I purchased a long time ago um, from the States. This is um, the Clara blouse from Sew so Over It. And I bought some navy blue ponte also from Sew so Over It. And I plan to make the Metra jacket by Love Notions. So there are, are some really good reviews on YouTube. Um, I'll pop the names of those channels down below um, because if you just Google in on search on YouTube, uh, the Metro Jacket, those reviews will pop up automatically. Uh, Josie did a really good one. Kim from Dorothy's Daughter and Lifting Needles and Pins. So I listened to what they had to say um, I would would say this is more of an advanced make. Um, a lot of people think it's intermediate, but um, I have I haven't got dyslexia, but I am borderline. So some instructions I do have a problem with, and I did with this jacket when it come to. Um, 
sewing the the tops together and then I realized you had to make a burrito roll but there are links so when I when you go to purchase the pattern and you download it that um, if you when you're looking at it electronically there are some links um, to certain parts of the pattern and if you click on those links they will t show you um, love notions do how to construct certain parts of the jacket which I found really useful so that really helped me so yeah um, I was a bit concerned about these faux pockets and I thought I'm not this is hanging and I'll have to sort that out I think I've just nicked the corner too much there so that is hanging a little bit strange but this one is okay um, I a lot of people they always rave about pockets I'm not a fan of pockets because I'm a curvy person and I think pockets if you put stuff in pockets they add bulk to your body and we don't want that um, and also I find if you're putting things in pockets especially knit fabrics you're going to drag down and um, yeah it's going to spoil the shape of your jacket so although they're useful I don't see the point and I was going to admit them but I thought no I'll I'll put them in this one see what they're like but I think if I made this again I would admit the pockets because you know I, I personally don't like pockets but um, yeah I really like I wanted to do the shawl collar um, so I chose that option um, I was a bit concerned about the shoulders because I'm usually quite short in the shoulder um, and I know Kim on Dorothy's Daughter did a fab tutorial on how to um, alter your pattern uh, for a narrow shoulder adjustment um, but I couldn't fathom in my mind's eye how I could do that on this jacket so I, was a, I thought well I'll just make it up I'll just go with it uh, but actually it uh, hangs okay on my shoulders so that was pretty lucky now I'm not going to try it on today because it is so hot I just can't bear the thought of putting this jacket on I'm sorry not even in this heat I can't manage that but what I will do when it's cooler is take some photographs and show you uh, what the fit's like if I made this again I think I might make it a little bit longer um, it did say it was shorter at the back and I realised that uh, um, where it was going to come to but yeah I think I would um, lengthen this but all in all I would give this a good 10 out of 10 um, for the instructions, the links to give you to the videos uh, you've got reviews from other sewing vloggers which are really good and uh, yeah I love how it's turned out it's really neat so yeah the only thing I would say is um, I didn't see any layout. I don't know if I've missed it for the pattern. You know, usually on patterns you have, you know, you lay your jacket uh, back piece here and I, I didn't see that. So I think if you're not used to dressmaking, if you're a novice, then I think that could be quite difficult to fathom out. Uh, but um, yeah, really happy with this. I'm going to make another so yeah um, and I know Kim's made quite a few off Dorothy's daughter yeah it's a, it's a really good make and um, so I'll just swizz it round and show you the back it's not showing up very well because it's navy blue um, and you're going to see it more when I show you my completed capsule wardrobe did top stitch as well around the bottom so um, I'll bring the camera up closer there and show you that um, yeah so that's the better jacket so that's my first make and I completed that last weekend
on Monday, I decided I would complete my cardigan for my granddaughter. So this is the pattern. It's by Paintons. This is actually um, for a cotton um, yarn. Uh, and I've knit it in a double DK, double knit acrylic. But it's fine. Um, you may recall I knit this um, same pattern for my granddaughter at Christmas time. I made her a red sparkly one with some robin wool. And I altered the raglan. On the red cardigan, I added an extra stitch either side of the raglan shaping so it gave it a thicker border. But this time I've stuck with the pattern. This is a four repeat row. It's a very simple pattern. Some of you may have already knit this. And if you're beginning with lace, I would always suggest this one to start with. It's um, first row is knit, second row is purl, third row is your pattern row, and then fourth row is purl. So very simple and it gives us lovely effect so on monday i was knitting up the the rib for the borders and it's a real push <laughs> to do that i must admit I've, i had started by doing 10 rows a day of this because oh, it just kills me off <laughs> knitting these you know <sighs> it can get a bit boring for you so and then sort of on Monday, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to really get on now and crack on with this. So I mattress stitched the button band, sewed the buttons on. Those are, I'll bring them up closer, are from Hemline. Um, I just purchased them from the garden centre. And um, yeah, finished it off. So that can now go out of my project rotation because it is completed. So that's good. So that's out of the way. I'll show you the ball band and knit the wool. <laughs> what I knit the, from the wool, I knit the cardigan with. It is Derrimore's, okay, studio, double netting. It's 100% acrylic because these cardigans are going to be chucked into the washing machine. There's going to be no hand washing. So you need a good acrylic yarn for children's knits and they're not itchy as well. So this is uh, anti-pilling, so we'll see how that goes. And the colourway is frost, so. project I started on Tuesday which is a jumper for my grandson. Now I'd asked my daughter Carly to look on Ravelry, make herself a member, look on Ravelry and pick some jumpers out or cardigans what you want me to knit up for you and she chose this one it's the Happy Camper Cardigan Um, the name escapes me now. I think it's Jojo, but I know I put the title in. This is beauty, isn't it? Of iMovie. So, anyway, she chose this jumper. Now, when I looked at it, because she wants it for summer, when I looked at it, it was knit in an Aran weight. And uh, you knit some mohair into this. And I thought, oh, right. This is not going to be, good, you know, appropriate for summer. So I decided I would knit it in cotton, okay. And then what I would do is I would use another pattern, okay, which is raglan shaped like that one to make this jumper up. So I've um, purchased this book by Anne Bud. I've heard a lot of YouTubers talk about this. And I thought, yeah, this is what I'll do so that I can knit this Happy Camper jumper in some cotton yarn. So I'll show you my yarn in a moment, what I chose, but basically you knit a gauge, a swatch, and then you pick, you know, you count how many stitches there are, 
I think it's to the inch can't remember but anyhow it explains all that in the book but I'm knitting with a gauge of five stitches um, and I'm a finished chest circumference of 26 so I've that's what I'm doing <laughs> oh yeah it's really good actually because um, I'm thinking want to get into this will be so much better because i've knitted since i was five and i've always just gone off patterns and you know and my day didn't bother with gauges and swatches but anyhow um what i've decided to do is try and improve my techniques so i chose um the paint box yarns and i'll show you and this is the problem with online shopping because the colours do not always um, show up as what you think they're going to be. So this is a lot greener than what I thought it would be. But it doesn't matter because green is his favourite colour. So this is colour 626 and it's spearmint green. So I've chosen that as the main colour. And then I think I showed you these in a previous vlog. But these are the contrast colours. So I've knit the body and I decided because you have to bind off for the arms. And then what you're going to do is you're going to join the sleeves to this and then you start your raglan shaping. So to make it all neat, I've done um three rows in the spearmint green so i know that when i knit the sleeve when i come to add the sleeve i'll do three rows of green before i add so it'll all match up so that is the the main body knit those on circulars and these are on my addies which are my favorite needles and these are also, I've knit the sleeve on uh, my DPNs. These are Addies as well. So this is the sleeve. So I'm just finished off with the green and I'm starting again with the spearmint. That's a little stitch marker I made. Because he likes to go outdoors a lot, so I've used a tree so uh yeah so that is the sleeve so i've only got another sleeve to do um so i'm going to do the three rows of the green because that'll join that now and then next time i work on it i'll complete the other sleeve so that's where i am with that wednesday i worked on um kringles by little house needleworks and i'm just stitching the roof at the moment so i think i'm about here now so i've worked across so i've got one more window to do so yeah i've just popped that bit of bat in there just to protect the bit i've already stitched so like i say this is the second the middle window just got to do a few more of the railings and then I'll move it across and do that last window. So yeah, I'm managing to crack on with this a bit. Um, this is a needle minder um, I purchased from a little shop in Trenton Village. Um, this is by Chapel View Crafts, it's a little gingerbread house. And on the back um, of the needle minder, it was like a little ginger biscuit. Oh, it's quite sweet so i haven't cut off my aida my uh fabric um because i haven't worked out how long it's going to be uh. but anyhow there we go that's that and it's living in this project bag i made and i'll showcase that on the last podcast so that was Kringles. Then on Thursday, I actually managed to start my Christmas stocking, which is a pattern by Molly and Mama. I've never heard of Molly and Mama before. Um, 
But I tell a lie. Um, I remember now um, when watching um, Crafty Jeanette from Crafty Clegs the other. Ooh, my hair's a right mess. Sorry. Uh, the other day, and she mentioned her Molly and Mama. I thought, oh, I remember you starting that now last year. Uh, but um, yeah, it was Davina off Little House Needlework. Uh, Little House. It was Davina off Little House Needleworks when she showed um the stocking that i thought oh i'll join up and do that stitch along as well that sew along so so i'll just show you i keep my hexes in this little box so the first thing i looked at my usually when i use hexes they are one and a quarter you see so you needed one and a half for this and when i look back now it wouldn't have made that much difference i could have done it with one and a quarter i don't know what i was thinking but anyhow i got um him and doors to go on to amazon and purchase me some hexagon dies for i've got um, a cuddle bug uh, what i use for my card making so those were by Gemini and there was lots of hexagon dies in all different sizes. So I thought, well, at least I can use the different sizes. So the one and a half size, I've cut out some paper. Now this was a bit flimsy, so I've gone to more of a harder card, which I had in my paper stash. Now I did buy some fabric glue, but no, I... I think I glued this one and that. Um, no, I've gone back to the old fashioned way of stitching through them. So I've chosen some Tilda fabrics. Now um, I will pop a little um, video, a little extra video of those Tilda fabrics. Um, I went to Holly's Haberdashery in Newcastle under Lyme and that's an online shop. Now Sarah, who owns Holly's Haberdashery, she's got a really good eye for curating collections, um, fabrics together. And sometimes I just buy one of her Fat Quarter bundles because they are good value, to be honest. And she's got a really good eye for colour. She really has. Um, you know i love creating and crafting don't get me wrong but you know sometimes my color schemes aren't as good when it comes to quilting whereas she's got this really good eye so i tend to trust her judgment um and she'd put this lovely collection together of tilda fabrics called bon voyage and uh, from the bon voyage collection and she'd actually made a quilt and i thought oh I need to make that I need to make that quilt so I bought the fat quarter bundle and it's really good value to be honest and I had some um, scraps as well so I've popped those in with the hexes so I'll just show you um, just a couple of the hexes um, this is from the Bon Voyage collection and I love it I'm gonna make a project bag with this as well this reminds me of the late 70s early 80s so those of my age group will remember uh, Laura Ashley now when I in the northwest of England we didn't have any Laura Ashley shops the Laura Ashley shop was actually in London and to purchase anything you would have to um, send off for a little catalogue because you didn't have the internet you see um, and then you would have to send a postal order you see because not a lot of us had checkbooks we had, might have had bank accounts but um, mainly you would buy things with postal orders so um, anything from early learning for my little daughter or anything like that we had to use postal orders so um, we had another designer called Linda Beard and she designed um, her range was called dolly mixtures and this reminds me of that era that pattern does of the dolly mixtures by linda beard or laura ashley it was all like these 
muted beiges and uh, lilacs or pale pinks or greens absolutely beautiful i am a beige person i love it so this is another one from the bon voyage and i fussy cutted that oops it's upside down to show the rabbit so i'll show you a few more of these hexes i've just got um a few more to make um and it's taken me a couple of days to be honest to cut out the hexagons and then to sew the the fabric to the hexi so i'll show you those in more detail and this um fabric here is what i'm thinking of making the pocket with and this is a tilde it's um, i think it's rose uh, but this is one of the blends that go with the tilde fabrics so that's as far as i've got with the christmas stocking so um i like to have at least 10 projects in my rotation can't get over this hair here <laughs> i have to just get rid of that Look like a comb over um, just putting the capsule wardrobe on hold for a week because i want to make um, a pair of trousers and a top because i'm that hot i need to um, have some summer clothes in my wardrobe so i'm using what's this thread from from that so i need to um, make a pair of trousers in this lovely chambray I purchased from Fabric Godmother. These are the trousers I'm going to make. So going to make another Clara blouse from Sew Over It. And this fabric here I purchased from um, Fabric Godmother. Oh, right. So that will take me the top and the trousers. I presume it will take me about two or three days to do that. So I'm looking at working on that till tuesday and then maybe on wednesday i'm going to start because it is jolly too why i was meant to be joining in with that so i'm gonna start this um christmas wreath it's called noel um yeah it's all in a kit it's all kitted up it's the anchor threads so i'm gonna start that and see how far i get with that Ooh. Then I'm thinking I will carry on with the little jumper I'm knitting my grandson. And also, um, I'll put the pattern in because I haven't got it with me now. But I made a couple of shirts for him last year, if you remember. Um, it had a Revere collar, a bit of a faff to put on, to be honest. But um, I've noticed that so over it have uh, brought out a pattern called the Jodie blouse. Now, um, I did speak to Sew Over It on YouTube the other day when she was making, she was doing the sew along and um, because I need to move my subscription over for Stitch School um, and I'm thinking, because I get a free pattern, I might purchase the Jodie. Now, she does, a, the, they were saying on this um, live chat um, that they actually do a tutorial um, on Stitch School regarding this Revere collar. So I thought, oh, that will be worth watching. Here we go again. The comb over's back. One moment. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, I have, like I say, I have made this a couple of times before, but I found the instructions on the pattern for the Revere collar a bit of a faff. So I'm hoping that um, the Stitch School's tutorial will um, give me more in-depth um, knowledge, really, of how to um, sew this more neatly. Um, saying that, it has held up the last um, couple of shirts I made him, so I don't think I was doing too bad. Um, I'm going to make him um, a size bigger this year, and this is this, I've shown this before, it's a beautiful cotton, and I picked it up. Um, at Abercorn's and guess where this one's come from good old Joann's in the USA so uh, yeah I love this so I'm going to give it a quick wash and uh, knock him that up and I'll show you that as well hopefully Ooh. right 
So I think I've got enough to be going on with, but before I go, I just need to show you, and it's in this big project bag I made. Now, last Christmas, well, Christmas just gone, I asked my daughter to purchase for me this book. It's Bloomsbury by Marie Wallen, the Bloomsbury, Bloomsbury collection. Now, I've never knit a Marie Wallen cardigan before, or jumper or anything like that. Never knit anything from Marie Wallen. Um, and I thought, oh, well, I'll have a go at this. So I'm thinking of knitting the Francis. And I already purchased the wool for this. Now, I can't manage um, itchy wool. It's a fact. <laughs> I can't. So I thought what I'll do, it's a cardigan. So I'll go 50-50. So it's 50% wool and 50% um, it'll be a man-made or acrylic fibre. And this wool... Oh, all best plans get let go. All best plans. Well, I can't even remember what the saying is. Anyhow, it's panache. And it's a double knitting wool. And it's by King Cole. And this shade is called Oatmeal. So I knit a little swatch just to see how I was going. It's quite a dense fabric it knits up because this is on smaller needles usually on a double knitting as we know it's a four millimeter and i think this is a three or a three and a half but i'm going to bring this swatch a little bit closer just to show you um in fact what i'll do is i'll do an overhead because the colors on this are beautiful now when you look at this it just looks like a plain sort of wool but you get these like little pools like of different shades it's it's gorgeous and when i saw this i thought this is absolutely when i saw this i thought this is beautiful and um you know i can't wait to knit this up really so i've knit the swatch and i'm swatching okay the stitches but the rows i'm not I'm not too out on the rows, but I um, just need to keep an eye really on the lengths of knitting, you know, the length really. So, yeah, I really like this, how it's knitted up. So, like I say, it is 50% wool and 50% premium, it says, oh, acrylic. I don't know what premium or acrylic is. But anyhow, um, you can watch it in 30 degrees. So, yeah, I thought that would look really nice. So we'll see how we go on with that. I wanted to buy a cheaper wool just to see how I went on, first of all. So, yeah, I think that's um, it really for this vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed what i got to share with you found it of interest and um i'm sorry that i'm melting in front of you <laughs> i wish the weight would melt away <laughs> stay safe and um happy crafting still got the comb over but never mind <laughs> need to make an appointment get my hair done um yeah so uh Hopefully next week I'll have a brand new outfit to show you and I can't wait because um, I'm looking a bit like a ragamuffin at the moment. Right, so thank you for watching and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy your week of crafting. Bye.